Hey everyone, please my coming out, ciao. In our previous video, we took a look at architecting play to earn games. And specifically, we were talking about that server component that can act as that middleman between your game as a client and the blockchain. I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper into that topic and specifically showcase an example of a tool that you could use to start architecting and build out that game. And that specific tool service is PlayFab. So PlayFab has been around for quite some time now as a means for really automating and simplifying the development when it comes to generally creating games, primarily around the multiplayer use case, but I think you can use that as a means for also ser a server authoritative use case as well. So we're gonna go through and walk through the platform and just give that high level overview of all the different tools that are part of that service. Then if there's interest, you can definitely let me know down either in the comments or over on Discord to actually look at a specific example of say, actually creating a build and leveraging the PlayFab service. But in this video, I just wanna keep it things very high level, pretty simple, just so that we can we can get a feel for what that really means. There are additional resources like Daper Dino's video that I think are really great resources that are available already today if you wanna look at say, deploying a multiplayer server onto PlayFab. So this is PlayFab. It was originally its own startup that eventually ended up getting purchased by Microsoft as part of now their Azure stack. A lot of the tools now are pretty tight tightly integrated when it comes to PlayFab and Azure. You'll basically sign up here. While it's not directly tied to Azure, like I mentioned before, a lot of the servers will end up being associated with Azure. Once you do, you will one, have a brief overview of setting up different projects and studios. I've just gone ahead and gone into the view right here where we're taking a look at one specific game that could be set up for your actual use case. If we head over to the top here, right? This is kind of your dashboard when it comes to your application. And the way it'll work is that there are a lot of different APIs that PlayFab provides and there are various different SDKs that PlayFab provides, including with Unity, that'll allow you to hook in and make, make those API calls here. And so if you've actually built out a full-fledged game, you'll start to see all of those different components emerge here as you're monitoring your game in real time. Likewise, the way things work with PlayFab is that everything is kind of oriented around the player. They provide some really nice tooling when it comes to enabling you to do user authentication, pulling those users in to your database. And you can see here as an example of a user that I've gone ahead and deployed. And then you can associate a bunch of data with that user, things like bands, virtual currency, inventory, uh, just regular player data, uh, and, and as well as username, password. All of that gets managed for you through PlayFab. And I think the way that this is designed as a service is really with the intent of making your life simple as a developer to not have to worry about the common metadata components that you're not are necessary when you're creating a network game. That's what's really convenient about all of this. On top of that, you have just moving through the, the tabs here. So heading over to the multiplayer tab, you'll see here, this is your place to actually define a multiplayer application. And this is useful, not only in the case of creating a scalable multiplayer solution, but additionally, it's also incredibly useful if you're building out server authoritative games. If we take a look at some of their samples, one of the ways that they're utilizing PlayFab as a multiplayer service is actually through Mirror. Mirror is really convenient in this regard as a server authoritative SDK that you can actually integrate with your game to one, not only manage the server and client together in one source code, which is really convenient, but then two, doing it in such a way that is sort of server authoritative. This is one of the examples that they have. This one I do think is a little bit more complicated to manage. As you can see here, the Unity server and the Unity client are two separate projects. But if you do scroll down to the bottom, I believe they have some references to community samples. And this one is the one that's covered in Daper Dino's video around the setup and this merges the, the client and server together in one code base. So if you're just trying to learn and experiment with PlayFab, this is actually a pretty good sample project that you can take advantage of. What will ultimately happen is that, say you're using PlayFab plus Mirror, you will go ahead, create a Mirror server build, and then you'll upload it here into this server's location, which will then go ahead and then start automatically scaling out your application. One thing that's important to understand with how this works, and I think ultimately why you would 
maybe want to consider using this type of service over say deploying this yourself is that they will handle the automatic scaling of instances, not only by creating more servers, but also utilizing multiple sessions within a given server. And if you want to learn more about that, if you actually click on that learn more section, it'll take you over to this page. And I think they give a pretty decent example of how to kind of estimate the cost and what that really means when it comes to calculating one, not only the cost, but number of servers that you need and how that that should get sliced up. Definitely some good reading and resource material provided by PlayFab, and that's really nice. On top of which, of course, if you are using any multiplayer service, you'll of course want matchmaking. So you can go ahead and set that up as well, as well as the addition of party. They have all of these different components that fit very nicely when it comes to creating any multiplayer application. A bunch of different add-ons here, if that is relevant based on whatever service you need. But I think some of the things that are more relevant when it comes to actually creating play to earn games is around their inventory system and economy section. What you can do is actually a twofold, again, based on the tabs at the top, what you can actually create is currencies and you can have this in the in the means that these are digital currencies so they're stored on the playfab database but you can start thinking about okay if i have a digital currency for my game i could use this for pe people that maybe don't necessarily have a blockchain or are new to the blockchain and then eventually want to migrate over to a system wherein they actually can use say ERC20s or integrate their wallet. It kind of can serve as a kind of a base building blocks, if you will, for a digital currency that eventually becomes a hard ERC20 or even an NFT down the road. That's that's one use case for these this currencies. This concept, I think you can tell by kind of recharge rates, recharges and initial deposits. It's really more designed for the free to play ecosystem. But I think that's where things kind of can be interesting if you're trying to merge the two between free to play and play to earn. Additionally, you have your catalog. So this is also incredibly useful if you're defining items in your game. And specifically, let's say hypothetically, you want to build out a digital equivalent of an NFT, just like what we described with currencies. This could be a potential option for you to easily define that within PlayFab, integrate that into your game, and then eventually have a user move over towards uh, NFTs and bringing that into their games as well. And I think in my mind, that's kind of the right approach when we're in this transition period for gaming at least, if you're trying to hit the broadest audience is really making sure that you target the free to play audience and then give them a nice onboarding experience into the play to earn ecosystem, which I think naturally most people will do because of the incentive mechanisms of actually being able to own virtual assets. That's, I think something that's really cool about the, the whole catalogs and currencies ecosystems within PlayFab. You of course have your leaderboards because that's also a natural fit within a, 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 any sort of game that you might be developing. And then you just have standardized content that you can use for say creating updates and, and managing that across various different states of your game, as well as last but not least, any analysis tools that you have. So it really is designed to be this whole complete package when it comes to helping you develop a free to play game of course, not a lot of the tools are here necessarily to build out the play to earn game. I think that's something that I'm actively thinking about and how there could be services that could integrate, say, with a PlayFab or say with even just a different service that could make this whole experience simpler because I think we're in the wild, wild west still when it comes to this type of technology. Needless to say, I think as a building block today, it's already pretty good to, to help you integrate. Kind of similarly how Morales is really good for helping people to get started with the Web3 side of things. PlayFab is really here to help you with the server authoritative nature of games. So that's just a quick overview of PlayFab in a nutshell. Again, if you are interested in more of a deep technical dive on like say how that those SDKs work for when it comes to the client, we can definitely do that sort of video. Just curious what the interest level is. So let me know down in the comments below or again over on Discord as well. I think that'll wrap it up here for now. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned something and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.